Hello, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can set up these static cameras that change based on where the player is in the world. So you see here that as we're... Oh, he looks really... <laughs> the outlines are making him look like a very worried bean. Um, yeah, so you see that as we go around into our different rooms, we have a camera set up for each room, and then we are moving relative to the position of the camera as well. <laughs> Why does he look like such a worried bean? I wasn't expecting that. Um, so yeah, let's just jump straight into how this was uh, set up and working. Okay, so the first thing we will do is um, I'll just go through the character kind of controller. Um, so this is just using the player controller skipped. Skipped? This is just using the player controller script that uh, Unity uses um, in their example for the uh, character controller move function. So you see here that I'll, uh, I'll have this linked in the description box below. Um, but you can see that if we're using a character controller, we use dot move to actually move the character controller. And Unity has helpfully provided a script that kind of, you just whack this on your uh, bean or whatever, your character and they'll, they'll, they will move. So um, I've got this here. I've made a few changes though for this to work. So the main differences are, let's just get these side by side. So this is all the same at the top. The only thing I've done is I've uh, serialized the speeds because two was really slow um, and I wanted to be able to tweak it in the inspector. Uh, but this is all the same. Um, instead of using add component dot character controller, I've used get component and then I've put require component type of character control on so that will add it on for you and then we can get a reference to it here. Um, and then start, that's that's changed there and then we've got grounded player, that's all of the same as here. Um, and it's just the move code because we want to move in relation to the main camera. So all that I've done here, and then the the rest of this script is the same. It's just this bit uh, up to up to here that's changed based on this script. So I'll just minimize that and I'll show you what I've done. So uh, we've got um, variable horizontal axis, and this is the horizontal from the input control, and we've got the vertical axis, which is the uh, vertical from the input control, and then. Um, we've got a vector three variable here forward, which is the cameras transform dot forward. So we know which way the camera's facing. And then we've got the cameras right transform as well. So to project the forward and to the right onto a plane. So if you can imagine that, you know, if, if it's kind of twisted like this, we've zeroed out the Y to bring it up to a flat plane. Um, and then we've normalized it to just make sure that it is a, a direction of one, a length of one. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, times our forward with our vertical axis and then add to that our right um, times by our horizontal axis. So the next process is our camera trigger zones, which these are just an empty with a Cinemachine virtual camera underneath them. And I've paired them to it. And then they've just got a very simple script on it, which um, it adds a kinematic rigid body so our player bean can actually interact with the um, on trigger enter function and it's also got the box collider um, which we programmatically set based on uh, this box size and then we've got our camera variable so let's just open this up so I'll show you how this works so uh, we've got require component type of box collider and type of rigid body so for these on trigger events to occur uh, something with a, one of the things in that colliding like equation needs to have a rigid body whether that's the uh, box or the player the player we're using a character controller not a rigid body so i've put the rigid body on the um, trigger box so now i've um, got a variable to store them in i've got those components here i've set the is trigger on the box collider to true so we can trigger it and it won't um, stop us actually moving through it and then I've got box.size equals our box size, which we can set in the inspector. And then I'm just setting the um, rigid body to is kinematic, so it won't move, it won't fall. It's not affected by forces or gravity. Um, it is literally just there to enable the on trigger enter method. Instead of giving, if you had loads of camera trigger zones, it might be more beneficial to just give your player a kinematic rigid body. Um, but this this will do for now. And then I've got on draw gizmos and I've set uh, the gizmos color to green. And then I'm just drawing a wire cube, which is um, helping us visualize the trigger zone. So this uh, bright green here, this is the gizmo. This uh, paler green, that's the actual box collider. But you can see that if I hit play, 
the box collider um, matches the gizmo uh, during play and it gets set to its trigger. The reason I'm doing it this way, um, you could, you know, do all this. You could get the box collider and set it um, is, and you could set it in on validate, which would do it in the inspector. But I just find on draw gizmos, it's just a little bit quicker. And then we can drag our box size. We can visualize it here in the editor. And then when we hit play, our actual collider will, um, it'll snap to that size. So as well as the serialized box size, uh, we've also got a Cinemachine virtual camera variable um, and you need to be using Cinemachine for this to work. And I've said, um, and then in the onTrigger enter method, it's really simple. So if other.gameobject.compare tag is the player and we're not already viewing the world through our camera that we've got up here, then switch to that camera. Um, and the way that this is working is I've got a camera switcher static script, like helper script that I've made. I do go through how to create this script in a video, which I'll, I'll link up here. Um, or you can obviously get this project over on Patreon and it'll have the script in it. Um, but I'll quickly just show you the script. So, uh, you know, if you want to, you can just freeze frame the screen and grab it here instead of watching the other video. Um, but if I go over to my camera switcher script, so I've got a public static property called active camera, which is just null initially. Um, and then when we switch to the camera, uh, we set our active camera to the camera that we've passed in that we've wanted to switch. And then what we do is we set that camera's uh, priority to 10, and then we loop through every other camera um, and set their priority to zero. And the way Cinema Machine works is uh, the cameras have priorities. So if one camera's got a higher priority than the other, that's the one that we're actually viewing the game world through. And then in this function, we've got um, a camera register and an unregister, and the way this and what this does is um, with our with another little script called camera register, which is on the Cinemachine um, virtual cameras, on their on enable or on disable, they're either going to register or unregister themselves with the camera switcher script, and then they just add themselves to this list basically. So then when we call switch camera, we're passing in a camera, we're setting that camera as that camera's priority to ten, and then we're going to go through all of the other cameras, set their priority to zero, and then that becomes the active camera. The way this actually looks in game is we've got our virtual camera here, which is underneath our camera trigger zone. This camera is uh, referenced here. And then down here, I have uh, the camera register script. So I've just dropped this script onto our virtual camera. So on play. So when I hit play, all of these cameras in this scene here, they check in, they check themselves into that list of cameras. And then in our actual trigger zone script, we're just saying like, hey, is our camera the active camera? If it is, don't do anything. Um, but if the camera associated with that trigger isn't the active camera, then it's probably time to switch to it. So we just call camera switcher.switch and then we pass in our camera. The way this works is because we're getting, because we're moving in relation to the main camera, which is co controlled by the Cinemachine brain, as we walk into our new box, the camera will blend over to a new position. So you see that the camera is swung around um, and during this like sort of interstitial period while it's moving, we're always going to be moving relative to the camera. So it always kind of makes sense. So whenever you're pressing W, you're going to be walking forward based on the camera's uh, forward rotation. When you initially set this up, um, I believe the default blend in the Cinemachine brain set to two. And if you look at this, this is... Um, I felt like that's quite slow, so you'll move over and it slowly goes around. Um, so you can tweak how fast this happens here. So you could do like 0 0.5 seconds and it'll be really quick and snappy. Uh, that makes me feel a little bit sick though. <laughs> I found 0 0.85 works, but then you can also just cut directly. So come in here and cut. Uh, the problem I find with this though is, and this happens in old older games. I've recently replayed Psychonauts and it had the same issue, but when you move into a room and then uh, if you're holding W and you move into a room and the camera just cuts suddenly, you're suddenly moving opposite to yourself. So you end up leaving the room again. So you have to go in and then let go of W and then press S to carry on moving into the room. Um, and it gets a bit janky. So what I, what I like to do is uh, do the E's and the E's out. Uh, there are other um, blends here and you can make your own custom blend. But E's and E's out with uh, 0 0.85 speed. It's just a nice quick kind of smooth cut. 
But yeah, that was just a quick little video on how to get this set up. If you've got any questions or would like me to go a bit more in depth, let me know uh, in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video and it helped, it'd be great if you could give the video a thumbs up and maybe uh, subscribe to bring me some joy. As always, the project files for this will be over on my Patreon, which is linked below. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.